Hey everybody, how we doing? We are out in the pasture, out here with the girls. Yeah, we are out with the girls, seeing what they're doing. And that's basically because we're getting to that time. We're gonna talk a little about the girls, but we're gonna talk a little about them as to getting set for breeding season. Who's gonna go with who? What you goes with what ram? and why I'm doing it. I thought I'd kind of fill you in a little on how I pick what use I want to put with what rams and why I'm doing it, why I pick with each one. There's our bottle baby. She's gonna be a little bit separate from the others. And otherwise, everybody is looking dirty. The white ones look really dirty. Yeah, it's been it's been kind of uh, dry here the last week or two, and it doesn't sound like we're gonna get much rain in the future, though there's a few clouds right now. But anyway, we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna walk my way back to the barn. We're gonna go back there, and while I'm doing that, we'll go see the boys too. Uh, I got one other thing I wanna talk about before we start on my subject for the day, and that is I had some bad news the other day. I got some bad news somebody the other day. Uh, one of the ram lambs that was sold here earlier this year had died. And uh, you sure hate hearing stuff like that. But I wanted to cover it for a reason. And it's something that I think a lot of people don't, uh, some people had experience with, but they really don't know what happened. And basically, because in this situation, when I talked to him, he said, I, he, he seemed a little off the one day. He said he's really, uh, he just didn't come in to feed, come in to eat quite like he normally would, so he thought he was a little off. And we kept an eye, but I think within 48 hours, he was dead. He was, I mean, nothing was wrong, it didn't look the wrong, <clears throat> excuse me, aside from being a little bit uh, uh, off his feet, everything else seemed normal, and at 48 hours, he's dead. And I think what happens is, my daughter has experienced this. Uh, we talked about this. It's a, a guy that she works with, with his goats, he had this happen. And what you're seeing in some of this is pneumonia. And around here, some of the pets even kind of call it silent pneumonia. And the main reason is, there's no real symptoms to it. Uh, there is no snotty nose, there is no coughing, there is no raspy breathing, anything you'd normally associate with pneumonia. It's just, oh, like my daughter said, the guy she knows that has the uh, goats, he had a buck. He thought he was, you know, maybe a little tail tucked one day, didn't look quite right in that respect. 48 hours later, dead. So he took him up to a vet and uh, checked out to see, and sure enough, it was pneumonia. And they said, why? You think, oh, it was wet and it was cold and it was damp and all that. No, a lot of this stuff is happening when it's in the 90s. Uh, my daughter had one with one of her goats that she was milking. Thought it was off a little bit. Two days later, dead. So it was warm weather in that case. The other guy's case, I had the feeling in this case of the, the ram lamb, he was down there, it was hot in the 90s. So you're running some of that same situation. So it's not like you think, oh, it's pneumonia, it's cold and wet. No, sometimes it can be hot, uh, maybe humid. But the thing is, the main thing I wanted to cover is the fact that simple is sometimes they die. And you say, gee, I wonder why he died. Well, in this situation, like I said, I think we're looking at pneumonia, but there's just not much you can do. Uh, you don't know what's there, so it comes on so quick and I know it's, it's just not something you need to beat yourself up over and feel bad about if it happens because there's just not much you can do about it. It's going to happen every once in a while. Hopefully it doesn't happen too often. But uh, I did want to cover that a little bit because I know that happened in his case and he felt bad that maybe something happened. Hey, there's not that much you can do about that when you get that kind of stuff. Figured we better come out and see the guys. Hey, there's Pete. Pete, how we doing? There's Pete the peacock. Yeah, you see no tail feathers? This is Pete's time of year. He loses those tail feathers every year. We gotta go through their 
go through that time, I got a nice big pile of peacock tail feathers in the barn. So, there's the guys. How we doing, guys? Huh? Are you getting ready for the girls? Yeah, they're starting to think that way. I'll tell you what. We get a cool morning, and uh, there's been a little head knocking going on, especially between Taz and Lomax. They've been the ones doing the head knocking. Stoney, not so much. You don't care so much, do you, Stoney? He said, you'll save all your energy for the girls. When the girls come, then you'll worry about it. And speaking of girls, girls and guys, who's going to be with who? Here, you going to come up? You think I got something for you? Huh? Everybody must think I got something. I'll tell you what, I am looking forward. October, Taz back there, we're going to put a tape on him. Yeah, we're going to put a tape on you, Taz. I got the feeling he's going to be, maybe with luck, maybe he'll be gold star by the time we do this. All right, let's discuss this on who goes with who and why. And I'm going to hang you up over here so I don't have to hold on to you the whole time I'm doing this. And I got to get out my cheat sheet because I can't remember everything. Hang on just a second here. We'll get you hung up. There we go. How's that? There you go. Got you hung up. Got to dig out my cheat sheet so I can remember. Because I got reasons why I'm doing stuff. And I thought I'd fill you in. Now, every year I do take, and I'm finishing them up probably today or tomorrow. So by the time you see this video, it should be up. If you go to the website, I'll put the link to the website in the description. You look at upcoming 2025 babies and you'll be able to see the pedigrees from the ewes and the rams and what the pedigree would be for the lamb. So if anybody's interested in some lambs, let me know, put you on the list. All right, we're gonna start with Stoney. I'm gonna start with him. In Stoney's case, I'm gonna put him with Tammy. Tammy is the Texas doll ewe, uh, not registered. Um, She's put out some pretty good lambs, though. We've had some pretty good lambs. I left a holdover for my son-in-law, my daughter's favorite. Uh, I've never had Stoney and Tammy together, so I thought, let's put them together this year and do it that way. He's also going to get Dub. He was with Dub this last year. We're going to put him back with Dub again. Had some nice color with some of those from Dub this year, so I thought, let's try that again and uh, go two years in a row with that one. And the other one that's going to be a little bit different, and that is we're going to put Stony with Brownie. Now, why is this one going to be a little bit different? Stony is a son of Rocky. Brownie is a daughter of Rocky. So they're both with, with Rocky, and some people say, well, that's a little close. Yeah, it can be, but you see a lot of that done. But here's my thinking. A few years ago when I got Brownie, my son-in-law had her. He had the Texas dolls and had a couple of the paints, and he had bred Brownie at that time to the only paint ram he had, and that was the son of Rocky. And here, here's Boo Boo. That's who he bred Brownie to, all right? And Boo Boo was the son of Rocky. Brownie's a daughter of Rocky. Well, here is Ringo. That's the one of the ram lamb that came from that cross. That's Ringo. He's three years old there. So I thought, you know, that's not a, not a bad ram there at three years old. So I thought, let's try that again. Let's do Stony Brownie. We're going to do a son of Rocky, daughter of Rocky. We're going to see what happens and see if we come up with some of the same thing or not. All right, that's it for Stony. Lomax. Let's take Lomax. Lomax has got a couple interesting ones, and here is where I kind of almost made a mistake. All right? I almost made a mistake with this on, as I kept lambs, and we'll kind of get into it. But we're going to start him out. We're going to start Lomax with Megan. I had Lomax with Megan last year. We're just going to put Lomax back with Megan again this year. She's produced some nice color, so I'm anxious to see. Uh, she'd been with him every year, so I'm anxious to see what color we get this year and uh, see what we come up with there. Next we're going to do is B7. I have not put Lomax with B7 yet. B7 is Taz's mother. All right. So we're going to put Lomax with Taz's mother. We'll see what that cross is. And along with B7, I'm going to take B7's ewe lamb that we saved back this year. All right. Part of the reason they're going together with Lomax 
is so I don't have to separate them. They've been together the entire time. She's probably weaned her off since. But the key is, if I was gonna put that ewe lamb with another ram, I'd need to separate them at least, the lamb and the mom, separate them at least a couple weeks ahead of time. And the reason being is, if I just pull them apart, then put them with two rams, mom and lamb are gonna be back at the fence trying to get to each other because they've never been separated yet. I don't want anything to interfere with breeding that's going on at that time. So in this situation, I'll put mom and daughter both together with the same ram. That way I don't have that problem. But I probably shouldn't have had this problem because in that ewe lamb, I probably should have sold that ewe lamb. I decided I want to keep it. I thought I'm gonna keep that ewe lamb because that is Taz's half sister. I thought, okay, I want to keep that. Taz is doing so well and looking so good. I want to keep that. So I kept the ewe lamb. Now here's the problem. That ewe lamb is a daughter of Stony, is a sister, half sister to Taz, and I'm now breeding her to Lomax, which means any ewe lambs that come from that crossing, I can't keep any of them because it's it's genetically with all three of those. So maybe that's one maybe I shouldn't have kept. I don't know, but for now, that's the way we're gonna do it. Last thing for, hey Pete, last thing for Lomax is gonna be Cali. Cali is, well, let's go back. Lomax's sire is Longshot. Cali is Longshot's twin sister. All right, so Cali is basically Lomax's aunt. Again, here's a situation for line breeding, looking to pick this better genetics. The reason I'm gonna go back with Cali again is this ram right here. This is, I'm told his name is Slingshot. Slingshot is by Lomax and Cali. That's last year's. And you're looking at a, a, a lamb right there, a ram lamb. I believe he told me it was about 11 and a half inch long horns and he's not even six months old. He's about five and a half months old and he's showing over 11 inch horns already. So that's looking like it worked out pretty good, good enough. I'm gonna try it again. So we'll put Lomax with Cali again. I really thought of putting Cali with Taz because as fast as he's growing, but I thought, no, we're gonna go Lomax one more time. I wanna see if we duplicate this one and then maybe we'll go Taz next year. All right, so that brings us to Taz. I gotta dig out. Who are we gonna put with Taz? Maxine, we're gonna start out with Maxine. Taz gets Maxine. Maxine is one of the ewe lambs I picked up in Kansas a couple years ago. She goes back to uh, Megatron Gold. You know, there was a time I could have sold Maxine. I wasn't, she was spookier than the rest. Uh, I don't know, just didn't care. But I'll tell you what, she, the first year she had no lambs. I brought the three back here in the summer, bred all three their first year as they were seven months old. Uh, the other two both had lambs, she did not. So she had to sit another whole year, but now she had the twins this year and it's like it totally changed her. It just, she, she became calmer. She's not as squirrely as she used to be. And uh, I don't know, she, and I like the looks of her better. All of a sudden she started looking better. So I'm happy uh, with Maxine. So. That's where we go with Taz. Next thing Taz is gonna get is my bottle baby. That's the Stony Dub bottle baby that I had left over this year. We're gonna go ahead and put that one with him. Uh, she could have gone with Lomax, but I figured he's got enough. So let's put that with a bottle baby. If it, first year round, if it breeds, it breeds. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't really care. We'll, we'll see what happens, but if it breeds, it does. And the next thing he's gonna get, he's got two more he's gonna get. He's gonna get Goldie, and then he's gonna get Goldie's ewe lamb here. Again, same situation as the other deal. I got two of them. I don't wanna to have to separate them just beforehand, so it's just as easy. Mom and ewe lamb both get bred to the same ram. And this one is gonna be interesting. I'm anxious to do this one too, because Goldie's ewe lamb right here, and I'm thinking of calling her Precious, all right? I'm, it's, she might get called Precious, that is Lomax's daughter. So I am gonna breed Lomax's daughter to Taz, and I'm kind of looking forward to that. I wanna see what we get out of that. that. That should be an interesting cross, I think, when it's all said and done. 
But there they are. That's what I'm putting with. Again, if you go to the website, you can check the page on there, the 2025 lambs. You'll see all the pedigrees and stuff. So you can see if you got one that's interested in, let me know. I'll put your name down. Uh, I do have some people looking at you lambs next year, but they haven't given me anything specific. They're just, I need some you lambs. They're not in that I want this one or this one. So, but I do have a situation that people are interested in one specific. You know, I want to get the, I want to get the Taz Goldie cross or the Taz Goldie daughter cross. I want to have that, uh, a U lamb from that or a ram from that. I'll put those down, you know, and we'll, we'll set those up for people or put reservations down for stuff like that if we get it. So, but right now, all I've got is people looking for general use, no particular reservations. But then again, nobody really knew who I was crossing with who. Now everybody's going to know, so we'll see where we go from there. Anyway, that's all I got. Hey, I do want to say thank you to everybody that bought a bunch of t-shirts from me when I put those up. I put the links into this t-shirts again down in the description. I thank you very much. Really do appreciate it. Sorry I wasn't here last week, but you know what? I do videos when I got something to talk about. Just not much going right now. So there wasn't much to talk about. So I just kind of left that one go, took a week off. Probably won't do anything next week, but we'll be back in a couple weeks. And where are we standing right now as you're watching this? I think we're about five weeks off of putting the boys with the girls. We'll see where we go from there. Catch you in a couple weeks.